Give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, what a God, what a God, what a God. You're watching us online. I trust that God has been impacting your lives. And rest assured, something supernatural will hit the airwaves in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seats. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, we just want to jump right into this. Let's see if we can uh, 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 just flow along the same line. We're talking on using the sword of God. Let's just look at that. Using the sword of God. Now, I want to just open up in Ephesians 6. And we're going to look at verse 11 to 17. Now, what I want to say to you before the reader read is this. We're living in the earth as believers. And although God's word is powerful, it's quick, it's sharp. God's word is the thing. Now, you can have the word of God. And you can feel Let me say it again. God's word is quick, it's powerful, transforming. God uses word to create the entire universe. But you can have the word of God and fail. Yes, I have them. Go on, pastor of them okay now in Ephesians now that I get that off first I want to show you something in Ephesians 6 from verse 11 to 17 as we dissect this okay I want to show you something that is happening to believers every day we save we go to church we fast we pray we pray in tongues we know the word, but still we fail. And we're failing. So let me show you something now. Let me show you what warfare is. Because I don't think we understand warfare. So we have to show you warfare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I start to feel happy. Hallelujah. Another example come to me before you read. A person can have an M16 automatic rifle. M16 automatic rifle, for example. And the enemy that he's shooting at of a 38 six shots in his gun and the automatic rifle the other person have and the person with the rifle can be defeated and drop blood off and the man with the 38 that has six bullets defeat him Him rifle quick and powerful, a sharp, full of bullet. But he no not know if he use it. Him run out. Pure leaf, he must shoot off a tree. And the man just get up from behind a stool. Pam! One shot. And him run out. Oh, bad man, a bad man. Man was tapping upon him shoulder. Pam! He never see him. 
Hallelujah. Likewise, your folks in church, God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Hey! The enemy touch upon your shoulder. Rugodov! You never see him. <laughs> Did you have scriptures? Yeah. You go to church? Yeah. You go fasting service? Yeah. What you lose? Let me show you something. We can't read it now. Read up. You, 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 you ready? Okay, read. What a girl Verse, enough, my cannot. Yes. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Put on God's whole armor. Uh -huh. The armor of a heavy armed soldier, yes. which God supplies. Which God supplies, yes. That you may be able to successfully uh -huh. stand up against all the strategies. Underline that. So, warfare is about strategies. That's the first one. Strategies. Read it. And the deceits of the devil. Deceits. So write number one. Strategies. Deceits. What else? Verse 12. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Uh -huh. Contending only with physical opponents. Yeah. But against the despotisms. Well, no, you, you need to know what despotism is. So let's look at the word despot or despot, right? Despotism springs from that. Meaning, write this if you're, if you're there, a ruler who exercises absolute power, especially in a cruel or oppressive way. Make me say it again. You know any ruler? Stay so. A ruler who exercises absolute power, especially in a cruel or oppressive way. You write it? Okay. So we cover two areas. Strategies. Deceits. Now it talks about a ruler. It shows something else in the midst. But let's find out what else in order for us to understand using the sword of God or warfare. Let's read a little more. Read it now. Against the powers. Yes. Against the master spirits uh -huh. who are the world rulers of this present darkness. So I want you to Write this, strategies, deceits, and you have master spirit. Read the rest. Read, sister. For we are not wrestling against what? For flesh. we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Yes. Contending only with physical opponents. But against the despotism, uh -huh. against the powers, yes. against the master spirits, uh -huh. who are the world rulers of this present darkness, yes. uh -huh. against the spirit... Underline this now. This is the third one. Against the spirit forces... Put it back up. Please don't play with me today. Thank you. Against the spirit forces of wickedness. In a heavenly supernatural spheres. So underline that. Against the spirit forces of wickedness. Okay. We're ready? Can I dig in a little deeper now? So your warfare on the earth amounts to these three things. Strategies. Deceits. Wicked spirits in heavenly realms are around the place. Now, we're talking about the sword of God, which is his word. Now, in John 6 and 63, it says, It's the spirit 
that gives life. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are alive. So words are spirit. Words are swords. God's word we just read is his sword. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. God's words are spirit and they are alive. God's word is his sword. God's word is spirit. God's word is sword. Watch me. God's word is sword. God's word is spirit. Words are swords. Words are spirit. You don't get it. God word is his sword. God's word is spirit. But words are also swords. And words are also spirit. So we have a problem now. The church don't understand this principle, so they don't know how to fight warfare. So the enemy says, okay, I have some words, and they are my swords. I have some words that are spirit, and I'm going to fight you with words. Oh, Jesus of mercy. So the battle is a battle of strategies, deceits, and words. May I show you some more? Now, Ephesians 6, I'd ask you to read, and you were reading, what verse to read? Okay, let's just read all of them. I, I want to focus on 16, but let's just read all of them quickly. Verse 13. Therefore, uh -huh. put on God's complete armor. No, we're talking about warfare and armor. And he's saying, no, put on God's armor. Now, look how God going to fight this. You tell me if you see a fist show, a chop release, a kick up. Okay, look carefully how God is fighting a war. Read it. That you may be able to resist uh -huh. and stand your ground. Resist and stand. So by standing, by not moving, I am fighting. My fight starts... Before my move. My fight starts by resisting. Oh, Lord Jesus. Reader, let's read some more. Let's do it little, little. On the evil day of danger. The evil day of danger, yes. And having done all the crisis demands. Uh -huh. To stand firmly in your place. You see that? Stand firmly in your place. Now, what kind of warfare that when we don't stand up so and now move? Eh? Or what kind of warfare that when we don't stand up and now move? We're not accustomed to that. We're accustomed to moving. But I want to show you something further. Read some more. Watch this now. We're coming to the nice part of the warfare. Verse Read 14. It. Stand therefore. See it again? Stand Therefore, hold your ground. Hold, that's three times now you see that word, stand, come. 
hold your ground or hold your position or hold your word or hold your sword. Read it now. How are you going to that? Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. Me no thump, me no kick. If you notice now, my warfare or your warfare, this is where we are failing. Tightening the belt of truth around your waist. You just heard the minister say a while ago, many years ago, he and Miss Palmer had an intimate relationship and with her five children. And the thing is that um, he used to, um, you know, um, he used to manufacture ice cream to glory to God in heaven. Hallelujah! Ice cream man about the place. Holy for ice cream man. Hallelujah. And them seem to sit in the same places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to laugh but learn. Now, this is what is licking people for six. You're looking for a devil. This is what we were taught. With a horn and tail and a pitchfork. Coming to you with him pitchfork and him tail and him horn saying, I am the devil. Now, cartoons have it as a little red man on your shoulder in a, with, with red, in a red, red cape and I want black fork. I want tail with a, it look like an arrow on the head of it. You see all them wicked to it and that Hollywood do it, you know. So it's that we're looking for. So guess what now? Christian will lose warfare every day. Because go back to this now. The first warfare or stance. Remember you know, His strategies. What he's really saying to you is. Hey, you see in the earth. Strategies and deceits are going to be used to get you to pull your belt. But stand up and girt it. Pull it back up. Tightening the belt of truth around your loins. Hold on you now. Truth around your loins. That means now, even the example gave earlier, masturbation is a loosening of the belt. Constant fornication is a loosening of the belt. Now, many people in and out of churches... That's where the warfare that them lose. The belt. You will look for Satan to come through your living room with a pitchfork. But you don't listen. He already tell you it's about strategies and deceit. So whilst you're looking for the enemy to come that way, you don't deceive and lose the battle already. Because your pants drop or your, 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 your belt pull and you don't do what you do already. And boom! Him come in already long time and here you know, where him there, where him there, where him there? Him gone already. Strategies. So what do you think the enemy does? He make you watch a blue movie. And you say, I mean one in my house. But he not see me. So you turn on the blues. And you watch it. And it go through your eye gate. Your ear gate. It get into your spirit. It affect your soul. I hear you now, no? Nobody no see me. Nobody no catch me. But guess what now? You lose already because the job, the warfare happened already. It's all about strategies and deceit. How I can deceive the believer who full of word. So you have the word. You go to church. But when church done, you go home. And you turn on your blues. And you turn on your lights low. And you lose the battle before you even move. What does this do to a man or a woman? Weeks or months or shortly after, you find that it already come on the inside, shut you down, and you can no longer function in a normal, natural relationship unless you masturbate first or shortly after, or you find that you can't do without this. Then listen to how the warfare and the strategies work. He used that to get inside of your house and affect your children. And before you know it, he used that to affect your children and affect your job. 
Then the man fake your money. Then the man fake. Then he comes in and affects every area of your life. That is warfare. Listen why. He use a strategy. And defeat you. So all you there lifting up your hand. You defeated already. Because you submitted. To lack of knowledge. You submit to the game of the enemy. And him use a strategy for defeat you. Did you know, you know how um, police and certain special forces overseas are successful? Let me tell you. Because it's a movie, my seat part. I was watching this movie. Um, I think it's with um, Wesley Snipes. And... This man here worked with the FBI. He said, search the dog house, farmhouse. When they, they was looking for him. What the movie name again? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, no, no, what show? Lord have mercy. And he's Western Snipes, and he was running from him. And, and they were searching for him. Now, this is the part that I capture in it. They were staking out the police at a house. And searching for him. Now, you had some police, you know, they were FBI's, but they were dressed like madman and in garbage pan. I have on some old time, like them a search out garbage pan. And when they reached the house and the man had run for escape, then just strip him and just take off the hat and just draw down a thing and say, FBI mark on the thing. Strategies. So you pass a man, look like him. In a garbage pan and him look rusty and old. But he's a police. You know what he's doing? Strategies. In war, that's what they do. You will go into the bush looking for the enemy. A way you stand up is a soldier of honor. A tree upon him head. And him dead. In face paint up green. And you never know you stand up beside a man. You know what that is? Strategy. So he uses strategies and deceits to defeat you. So here you come now. When I'm there, when I'm there, when I'm there. And you lean upside of one tree. And I know some man you lean upon. Because the man paint himself green. He does choke you. You see that? I'm saying now. The church. We learn in scripture. But we get beaten and licked for six through strategies and deceits. Because the very person who you preach to, who you teach, who you feed every day, is getting defeated every day. Listen why. They're having malice in them heart, and the enemy use malice and unforgiveness as a strategy. And I glory to God in heaven. So with all the 15 scripture you know, but you have resentment, and you, and you suffer from unforgiveness, and you think that you're winning the battle. No, you have lost the battle and the war. All he has to do is create an opportunity for somebody to step on your toe. And you cuss them and have them up. And you're at church every day. Him say, all right, me can't fight you. So me just have to use strategies and deceit. So you dress up good. You come at church. Nobody not sweet up like you. Nobody can praise and worship like you. Oh, when people see you worship, them all ball. Them say, marvelous. That person must be close to God. But you are chief fornicator. You struggle. You know why? The enemy use strategies. What he has done is, he know you like a certain kind of man. He know you weak to a certain kind of man. And he does send the man your way. With a rubber shot herself and your 15 scripture, but you're weak to the man. And the man come now. Hi, baby. Long time don't see. Your eyes make me tremble and your hips make me weak. And you just turn over Anthony that bloop. This is enemy enough, not even fight you no further. Yes, I left me up, carry me out for KFC. Are you frightened for KFC? Hallelujah. You see that? 
strategy and deceit. It's happening every day. A man drive up in our X6. You don't need that because you don't want to take no bus no more. You have to drive in a car front. Strategy and deceit. And before you know it, you're pregnant and you're not married. Strategy and deceit. Him deceive you and you shame and you can't come back to church because guess what now? You are there looking for uh, the devil with, with a fork and a red suit and a tail. And every day is strategies and deceits. I reach everybody. Strategies and deceit. Getting people to dress up and buy costume round about the time when we celebrate Jesus and when we're supposed to look on what God has done and reflect on the goodness of God in thus putting in a strategy to have some idolatrous service where we're going to celebrate the flesh and walk naked and do all kind of things and you don't realize that you're getting in trouble with God. You're provoking God. You know what that is? It means a strategy and deceive you and win the war over you and if you don't recover out of that quickly you're in a trouble with God let me say this to you some of you may not know and some of you may not even want to relate it and some may say what you want to say or whatever but remember we are spiritual people I'm saying to you think it strange that the earth tremor will feel Happen right in when people are revel and are plan revel in service and it's happening in different places. The tremor that you feel is it a warning from God? Everybody's focusing on oh, it was 5.1 centimeter. Back up a little bit, back up. What we were doing the days before were we provoking God? Is that a warning from God? Remember a certain country not long ago they provoked God and the water, the sea came over. I think it was Bahamas or one of them small islands eh? and the sea come over upon the land and Liko and shark come over upon the road and Niam people. Hello! You have provoked God. The enemy use strategies, deceits and words. Warfare is words. Words are spirit. Words are sword. Words can cut you. Words pierce you. You did finish read or power. Oh, yeah, read so slow. Read. And having put on the breastplate of integrity. So if you notice now, the breastplate of integrity. Me not throw no thump yet. Me not throw no kick yet. You see how this is a warfare you fight? Listen, put, put it back. <laughs> Tighten my belt. You see that? A warfare this, you know. Then the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with God. You see that warfare? They may not move yet. Now let me say this to you that you didn't know. Psalm, proverb, ecclesiastics, all of that is based on the righteous. The Bible itself is a book of seeds geared Towards those who are right with God. What their benefits are. Hello. I said let me say it again. Psalm. You check it. Everything you read in the book of Psalm. Is geared for the righteous. You never know. All you will see is. The righteous shall this. The righteous shall get. God bless the righteous. God loves the righteous. The righteous man shall be blessed. The righteous. Look at Psalm 1. It's all about the righteous. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And we don't know. He talk about the righteous. Psalm 112. And wealth and riches shall be in your house. Read a little more. The righteous. Psalm 91. The righteous. Ecclesiastics, in the, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added. The righteous. Are you aware of that? Who can be right 
long enough, get the spoils. I will feel every day. Because the enemy get you. If you cuss your sister. If you have up your brother. And you think you're going to lose already. Him use strategies and deceit to defeat the people of God. Why would you read the word of God as a map that tells you, love your brother, love your sister, love and not hate. And you choose hate and think you're winning the war, you have lost already. Hallelujah. I've never seen so much hate in the church, so much bitterness in the church, so much mayhem in the church, so much unrighteousness. In the church, among church folks. I will not understand, say, the blessing, the reward, even heaven is geared only for the righteous. Those who are in right standing with God. So we should be practicing righteousness. Only never see. That's what I'm going to show you. The enemy's plan is to trick you to practice unrighteousness. Get you in a position where you don't see it, where you don't realize it. The church quiet. So we're quick off a curse, down for bless. We're quick off a hate, down for love. We're quick off a have up, down fix something. We quick off a malice than to do the right thing. You know why? We don't realize that that's the strategies and the seeds of the enemy that will put you down that road because he knows if you're down that road, you have lost the battle. Let me show you this one. You, you didn't finish reading the thing? No, you shall read so slow. Read quick, man. Verse 15. 15. And having shod your feet in preparation uh -huh. to face the enemy. All right, so go evangelize, basically, with a firm-footed stability, the promptness, the readiness to produce, but our, our readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. So you should be out there, what? Demonstrating and what you call, you know, evangelizing the things of God. Read now. Verse 16. Verse 16. What Lift is? up over all. Lift up over all. The covering shield of saving faith. Uh -huh. Upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. You see that? That's the dark sword. The flaming missile of the wicked one is words. Words. The battle that you're going to face in the earth is words. Words is part of the battle of warfare. We're talking about the wielding the sword of God. You have to know words are, word is a sword. Words are spirit. Word is a sword. God word is spirit. God word is a sword. So don't just think it's only God word is spirit. No, the devil word is spirit too. Because the devil is also a spirit. Let me show you. Proverbs 12, 8. Proverbs 12, 8. Let's do this quickly. Verse 8. Proverbs 12, 18. Sorry. Proverbs 12 and 18. Verse 18. There are those who speak rashly, uh -huh. like the piercing of a sword. You see that? Speak rashly. Wicked talk is like the piercing of what? A, a sword. sword. You see that? Words is sword. There are those who speak rashly. People who tell you things will cut you. You people who tell you things will hurt you. So just as I just said to you that God's word is a sword and his word is spirit. His word can cut you. See it here now. There are those who speak rashly like the piercing of a sword. You have some people who will tell you something sitting. And it cut you. And I'm saying no, no, it's a word. You have some folks, whether in your family or, or your friends, who you and them can't really take tea. Listen why. 
if you really sit down and think about it, as some things where them tell you what you don't like, it hurt you. It cut you. It's a sword them use and cut you in know, words. Read it again, reader. Verse 18. There are those who speak rashly, like the piercing of a sword. Yeah. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. You see that? Let's, let's, let's push this some more. Proverbs 26, 22 to 26. I want to show you now that words are swords. Words are spirit as well. And I want to show you now how that word finds its way to go into your body and can shut you down. The word can go into your ear gate or, or, or your eye gate, wherever or from your mouth. Your mouth is a door. It can be used to enter your spirit, man. And I'm showing you now, these are the strategies of the enemy that the church or most church people don't even think about. And that's why we're losing the war. Because guess what? We're praising God on Sunday and we're doing unrighteousness on Monday. We're praising God on Sunday. Like I told you a few days ago, some church folks who go to church tell me, it, it nothing is wrong if you say or if her son call another boy a dog warm dog she said nothing wrong with that a church person words she said nothing wrong because he don't really mean that he is a dog but the word never say you will have what you mean it says you will have what you say let me show you how words work read it now verse 22 the words of a whisperer. The words of a whisperer. Read, or read now, sister. Read or it. slanderer. Or a slanderer. So, you, so you know, no, 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 joke thing this, you know. And this we have to deal with every day, you know. Whisperer and, sla and slanderers. Eh? Them, they're everywhere. So nobody only think in a church. Them, they are your workplace. So nobody come talk about only church. Them. No, them, they're everywhere. Whisperer and slanderers. They may whisper to you, and as them left you, them go whisper to somebody else. Hello, read what, what the Bible say now. Are like dainty morsels. Are like dainty morsels. You want, you know what that means? It's like a raisin bread, you know, cheese bread, you know. When a whisperer come to you, nice, you well want here. I'm drying our corner, yes, yes. You well want here. So it says, it's like a, it's like a dainty, it's like Danish. It nice, whisperer. Them come tell you something and you thrive on that. Especially if them come tell you, say, you know, me hear about you, say. You hear what Tom say about you, say. You see that person that who get the word that I like pastry to you, you know. Because you know, realize that it's going to build up hate in your system against who you heard said it. Read it. Or words of sport to some. You see, words of sport, you know, you enjoy it to some. Uh -huh. but, but to, to others, others uh -huh. Are like deadly wounds. Uh -huh. And they go down into the innermost parts of the body. I wonder if you don't see that. Them go down deep into the innermost part of your body. Read it. Or of the victim's nature. Glory to God in him. This mash up your system. Hello. It make you have bitterness and forgiveness. It go down into your body. It's in the deep part of your body. Don't the word of God in Hebrews 4.12 says it goes to the deepest part of your body. Glory to God. Well, the word of the whisperer or the slanderer, it can go deep too. It can go down to your bone. It can make hello. And it make enough people sick today. Read it. Verse 23. Burning lips. Ah, oh, Jesus. Burning lips. Uttering insincere words of love. Uh, uh, well, no, at this we deal with every day. If you go to church, you deal with this every day. Whether you're saved or unsaved. Burning lips, people who come to you. With, with <laughs> you know, read that again for me, our sister. Read Ver it again. Verse 23. Burning lips. Uh, uh, it's, it's, see the nice part there. Yeah. Uttering what? Insincere words of love. Insincere words of love. These are the strategy and the seat, you know. Because sometimes you think people love you. The way all them hello, the way all them greet you and talk to you. You feel, you believe that them check for you. And you believe that them love you. But here the scripture says, Our only burning lips them have is in the leaves. <laughs> and that a beaten off away. Read it. 
and a wicked heart. <laughs> a loving heart. A wicked heart. A wicked. You have to express the wicked in our sister. A wicked heart. Yes, man. That's how you have to say it, man. I should have made Nadia say that for me. Sure. Anyway. Hallelujah. Read it. Are like an earthen vessel uh -huh. covered with the scum. Uh -huh. thrown off from molten silver yeah. making it appear to be solid silver yeah. verse 24 he who hates pretends with his lips you see that mm -hmm. but what but stores up deceit within himself see the strategies wickedness when we teach this it requires you watching me at home examine yourself those of you watching me online or wherever, examine yourself. As a matter of fact, you might be living in a household. I would advise you to walk and examine every soul in and around your house. If this not reach you, bless God. But I'm saying some of the very people that might be in your house or around you, this is what they're giving to you. Hallelujah. I said this is what they're giving to you. We're living in a time where brother, not like brother, sister fights sisters. Other family member can't take a bone in on you because God might have blessed you. Hello, it is happening all over. People not happy for you when you're doing well. When God bless you, people not happy for you. And sometimes the sad part of it is the people who you thought would have been happy for you are the ones who hate you. Who are caring barely for you. Nowadays you can rarely find someone who you can celebrate with or who you can go to and share something where God has done for you. You have to tiptoe now. You have to come like you have to keep it to yourself because you don't know who to tell now because you may run to somebody and say, you know, God bless me with a new ear do and you don't know, hear them chat to you again. All of a sudden, they don't come look for you again. Words I want to show you. What you think got Job into trouble? And I'm showing you this in a Job didn't know. is a strategy of words. The enemy got Job to say some things pertaining to his children that he didn't know would have haunted them. That is strategy, deceits, and wiles of the enemy. Wicked spirit in the heavenly realms who get you to say the wrong thing who get you to do the wrong thing and then after you do it now by the time your quint your money gone your car gone your job gone your house gone your picnic them a struggle all kind of things happen it's a wicked spirit that's why we have to show you that Job 6, 24, 25, King James. I want to show you. Job did not know that the enemy used his strategies to get him to utter the wrong words. It is the words that Job said pertaining to his children that caused the destruction and the dilemma of his entire household. He lost his children because of words. Words, you know, words. And when you hear Christians or people today saying, nothing no wrong if I say what I no mean. Everything is wrong with it. Job learned the hard way. Read it. Verse 24, King James. Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Hear that? Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Read it. And cause me to understand wherein I have erred. No, for we don't understand that we are erring every day because of what we say. Words. All that happened when you read the book of Job. In Job 1, it said Job was a righteous man. Job had money. Job had everything was ankidore. Job was having a good life until he noticed his brothers, you know, his daughters and his sons were having parties. And it says, and Job said that maybe them sin against God, maybe them curse God. So Job started to offer sacrifice for them and say, oh, I'm a pick them curse God. I'm a pick them, I'm going to go to hell. And he begin to speak some negative thing over his children. It says Job did that every single time that there was a party that they keep and it invited the enemy to come into the midst and destroy his family words so here it is after he found out he said Lord teach me 
that I would hold my tongue. Show me where my arrow. Read the rest. Verse 25. How forcible are right words. Glory to God in heaven. How forcible are right words. Or we can say, how forcible are words. Words are powerful. Words. We're talking about the sword of God. Which is the word of God. And the word of the spirit. But the enemy also has some words. Sometimes people will say some things to you. If you're not careful man. Your tongue back and fling to a stone. You have folks who will set out to come. And set you up in life. Some of your men you better watch it. Because you have some folks. Who their mission is to set you up. Some of you ladies, you have to know there are strategies. You have some men also, because I want to balance it, who their assignment is to set you up and got you like a mullet. And by the time you quit, it is over. All cherries are picked. All is left is green leaves on the tree. Glory to God in heaven. Hallelujah. And by the time you quit, your money gone. Your house gone. This happened. That happened. And the enemy gone long time while you're in a fasting and prayer service. Because we think that the devil is going to come through your front door with a horn and tail and a pitchfork in a red suit. Hallelujah. Because that Hollywood tell you and tell you that I am the devil. I'm here to tempt you. Look what he did to Jesus. It was a battle of words. He said to Jesus, hey, bow down and worship. Words. He used words. And Jesus had to respond with what? Words. It never said, and Jesus thump off of him. And kick off of him. No, you see, it was a battle of words. And when Jesus spoke back the word, Hello, him checking belt, and it was okay. Did you know that Jesus was tested by the well where from the woman? Yes, yes, I am one was there, the disciples had gone, the woman came, glory to God, and he was, he was having a conversation with her. Hello, you know, understand, said Jesus was hello, a sweet boy, you know? look good. So don't think she, she never have an agenda. And then him just says, so which part your husband there? You know, no, I'm not. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wonder why you should have said that. Like some of you ladies, you never have no man yet. Until the man come out your yard or in the enemy here. You know much man getting a problem, so you meet girl and them say, Me not have nobody, I'm alone. And now when you start hang out with them, hello, a man turn about and nowhere and fight break out. Sometimes is that happening you now? Man no know say there was another man. Cause you say you're not nobody. A man I look out for you, I buy this, I buy that. I buy three piece dinner for you. And then we see one next man turn up now and say, Punsi is who this. And you turn to the man and say, oh, how that? Him say, hey, oh, 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 hey, oh, oh, hey, boy, run off. Don't say nothing to me. Here you know, go ahead, oh, my woman. You are really idiot. <laughs> Come to God. I had a friend. I said, had. He lost his life overseas for the same thing. He lost his life, you know, for the same thing. He went to visit a girl who he not seen in a long time. And he was spending a few days at her house. Every time I think about it, he gave away his life. Now, him there with the girl, you know. And one evening, he made a knocking upon the door. Heavy knocking. Him, him opened the door because him a man a yard. A man turned up and said, who you boss? A foreign this, you know. So he must have said, who you? The man said, oh, you mean, oh, me. A way I do in a woman house. Him said, which woman? Man said, move from here, sir. The man said, brethren, I better you come out, you know. Which part so and so there? And him asked for her. Now, if that were you or me, me would not stop me. For me, the knocking, I miss the man turn up and say, Where are you? I say, Boss, I'm so sorry, the wrong house, me. Hallelujah. I just take up me. A matter of fact, me leaving in my brief. 
me, 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 me living in my brief. Okay. They, 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 me, me must can't find some other ways to get clothes. Me, me, me go to my car in my brief and leave. Take my jeans and my top. If I brief me come with at the door, me leave in my brief. Me no want to entertain. But now I'm stopped there arguing. So the man asks for the girl. You know the cruel part of it? The girl came. Here are, here are now. This is what I heard from my other friends who live overseas. That the girl come and say, Who no stop the quarreling now? Who no stop the argument? What? Who no stop it? So, she, you know, it's like you're fighting over me. Now, before my friend, take him little dulcimina and take away himself. Whether brief or briefless, just leave. He may argue with the man. The man say, all right, me soon come. Him lock the door in there, talk to the girl. Man say, him soon come, brother. Chuck through the window, take off. Him wait till the man come back. Knock the door again. Him come open back the door. Before him send the woman go open the door. Him not live there, fear house. I understand that several shots were fired, pumped into him. He lost his life. And the man turned away, walked away, and left the girl. Same way. And gone. I don't know if they find him yet. I don't know whatever, but this was many years ago, and that's what I heard happen. I'm saying no, he gave away his life. Gave away his life. Fear apple. Me you know what kind of apple if I cost that apple or what? <laughs> life fear apple. Now was it worth it? Can worth it? Eh? It's an American apple. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now it's simple. Just, just, just take for yourself. You stand there, is that the war of words? Words. And one word cut a man, and the man said, I soon come. And him did I wait for the man to come back? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Hallelujah. I'm showing you Job's experience was words. Let me do this quickly now. So in, sec in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, and maybe we can stop here if you don't have any questions. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 to 5, you're going to see something here now. This is the battle of words in the earth. Strategies, deceits are filled in the earth. Who can deceive who for do things? For either do this, go here, so, dress up in a this. Or lend me some money now, and you know you're not going to pay it back. Strategies and deceit. Them always a borrow, and know them not going to pay. I trick them, trick you. Ladies, when a man uh, walls him way into your life, sweet words, what do you think happened to you? Strategies and deceit. Kick with your foot. That's it. Men, what do you think happened? Wor words. Woman tell you sweet words, and get you to pay the rent. And buy a dresser. And buy a fridge. Our words them. You know me love you. Boy, you're black and shine, but me love you. You know? You're black, shine, and powerful. I love you. And you're Tony idiot with that. Eh? Because nobody never tell you say you're black and shine and powerful. Hmm? But she tell you that now. And same time. Mm -hmm. You black him, black him, chop, chop black him, man, and that that just make you know it 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 cream you up. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yes, man. One little chop, she chops up by your ears, and you just give a cream. Eh? You just give a cream so. Eh? Glory to God! Hallelujah! Hey, hey! Me I feel off, eh? One chops and cream flour. Manufacture cream. Suppose it was two chops, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah! Frick 
shot fire because nothing. Not. Hello, hello. One kiss, scream done, you know. Two kiss, where would that happen now? Eh? Things start swell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah. Reader, you were reading. Reader, laugh, eh? Reader, eh? Yeah, no matter about creamy, read Read. Verse three. Yeah. For though we walk, that is live in the flesh. We live in the flesh. Uh -huh. We are not carrying on our weapons according Sister, to the flesh. No, the cream sick like it make you read something around. <laughs> or our fears. Yeah, man. And, and the cream, you know, and the cream. And <laughs> From here about cream, you, you don't remember which part you yeah, yeah, read. Anyway, read. Verse 3. Yeah. For though we walk, that is live in the flesh. Uh -huh. I thought I could say live in the cream. Anyway, go on. <laughs> we live in the flesh, yes. We are not carrying on our warfare uh -huh. according to the flesh. Yes. And using mere human weapons. We're not using mere human weapons. Watch the warfare now. Read it. Verse 4. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare... Are not physical weapons. You see that? Not physical weapons. Uh -huh. Of flesh and blood. Uh -huh. So it's not knock fists or throw foot. Uh -huh. but, but what? But they are mighty before God uh -huh. for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Destruction of strongholds. So if you're struggling with a weakness in your body, you can use the word of God or words to bring down that stronghold. Words, another scripture that can be used, especially if you're in a lost area or you have addiction, whether of cigarettes or any kind of addiction that you're struggling with, that has become a stronghold. You can use Romans 6, 11, 12. Um, after you finish, oh, okay, let's just go there and then we come back to what you was reading. So keep your finger there. Uh, let's just use this. Romans 6, 11, 12. Verse 11, even so, uh -huh. consider yourselves also dead to sin. So where you see that word sin, if it's cigarettes you're struggling with, you said, um, even so, I consider, you have to personalize this to meditate it. I consider myself dead to cigarette or dead to masturbation. Those of you who are in the master club, hallelujah, remember now, you can use this. Those of you who are struggling in whatever area of weakness, you're going to put that weakness where you say sin. Put it back up now. So it says, therefore, consider your, yourself. So you would say, I, even so, I consider myself dead to, fill in the blanks, and my relations to it broken, but alive to God or to love, because God is love. You can put, put alive unto God, living in unbroken fellowship with him in Christ Jesus. You see that? So you can use this scripture to defeat any stronghold in your life. You meditate this. What verse 12 says? Verse 12. Let not sin therefore rule. Alright, so remember now. Let not cigarette, masturbation, or whatever else. Anybody can help me fill in that blank there. Uh, let not that thing therefore rule as king in your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies. You see that? To make you yield to its cravings and be subject to its lust and evil passion. You see that? So you meditate Romans 6, 11, and I think, you know, just personalize that, mutter it. Whisper it, think on it, and block out that stronghold that you're facing. So if the stronghold is lies, because some people lie bad. But they will never. Them so lie that when you tell them, so them lie, them, them tell your next lie, say no, them no lie. Hallelujah. So whether it is lying, stealing, Whatever the thing is, you put that thing in there. If it's cigarette smoking, whatever it is, put it in there. Meditate on that. And I guarantee you, after 21 days, any habit is formed. 
you meditate this day and night for 21 days, the habit will be formed. That thing will be pulled down. That stronghold will come down. I hope I'm helping you. Get back to our reading now. Verse 5. In as much as we refute arguments. You see that? In as much as we refute arguments, yes. And theories. Yes. And reasonings. Uh -huh. And every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Uh -huh. And we lead every thought and the purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Okay, so you see that. So it's, it's the battle is about thoughts that comes, is warfare. A thought come, an evil thought, cast it out. A negative thought come, cast it out. Sometimes it's in the form of a dream. A bad dream come, cast it out. It's a bad dream. You don't want that because the word of God says the thoughts and plans that I have for you is for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your fight and outcome. So if a bad dream come, if bad words come, then you reject that based on the word of God. That's warfare. So you're going to use the word of God, that is the sword of God, to meet the sword of the enemy. You ever watch the sword fight? And you're, ching, ching, ching. Sword against sword is the same way in the spirit world. The enemy it will fling a bad dream at you, but you have to fling back some words. Ching! The enemy is flinging a bad thought at you. You have to open your mouth. You cannot fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. If you ever try to fight a thought with a thought, you're going to lose that battle. Never try to fight the thought in your mind. You're going to have to open your mouth and say words. So if a negative thought comes to your mind, open your mouth and say, I renounce that. I refute that. If you have a bad dream and the dream is an evil dream, you get up and cancel that dream. Some of your females and male, you will dream that you're having intercourse. This is a common thing. It's a strategy of the enemy to transfer some things to your body. You're going to have to get up and once you remember that dream, chop it off. Say in the name of Jesus. No, I mean chop off the, 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 the area. What I mean is, you're going to have to say in the name of Jesus, my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I reject and renounce every familiar spirit. I cut off the spirit of lust and sexual immorality. Devil, the blood of Jesus is against you. So some females, you've been attacked into your sleep sexually. Don't take it by just taking it. Oh, it's just a dream. No, it's not just a dream. It's a familiar spirit that wants to have intercourse with you, that wants to transfer some evil things to your body. You're going to have to renounce it and take authority over it and cast it out of your room, out of your house in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! You're going to have to do that. So when a bad thought comes, cast it out. Bad dream come, pull it down. That's how warfare is. You fight words. You use words to fight thoughts. You open your mouth and you say. That's why God says, let the weak say, not think. Say you are what? Strong. It never said, let the weak think you are strong. He said, the weak must say you are strong. Isaiah 33, 24. Quickly, it never said, let the inhabitants think he is sick. You're going to have to what? Say. So it's a battle of words. It's a battle of saying. Who says and holds their grounds long enough is the victor in the war. Glory to God. Whoever stand them ground on what you know from the word of God. Stand your ground. Some of you let some people come and move you from your ground. You're in a ground where you're learning the word of God. You're at a church or a place where God's word is rich. And you make somebody come and move you out of place. The Bible says stand your ground. But some of you make people move you out of the space. Stand your ground. That's the strategy the enemy used to move enough people. Just come tell us something bad about the place there. Come tell us something bad about the man there or the woman there. And you move out of your space. You lose. Are you telling for read something, sister? Isaiah 33, 24. What it says. Verse 24. 
And no inhabitant of Zan will say, you see that? Say, not think. Say, because thoughts will come. But you're going to have to say. Don't say what you think if it don't line up with the word. It said, no inhabitant shall what? Will say, I am sick. Uh -huh, read it. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity and guilt. Glory to God in heaven. So you don't say that you are sick. You don't say that you are weak. It says, let the weak say you are strong. So the warfare is, when the thought comes, you're not going to make it. You're not getting a job. Open your mouth and say, I am blessed and highly favored and I'm on a magnet and more. I will get a job. Doors are open for me. I have favor with God and favor with man. You say it even when you're salt. You say, I am blessed. Even when nothing will happen for you, say everything is going good for me. When your cupboard's empty, don't say, Lord, the cupboard empty. No. Say, my cupboards are filled and running over. I will say because I will see what I say if I say it long enough. Come on, give God praise for that. Glory to God in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give God praise for his word tonight. I want to stop here unless there is a question. We will take one or so. Um, um, if there is, yes, let, let us just take that in the meantime, guys. Ready? I, I, I heard uh, somebody text a testimony to me always. I would really love to. I, I read it. I would really love for you to share that. I don't know if it was a, a miracle service. I prayed for several folks with different kind of cases court case, different thing happened. And I'm saying to you, when God has done something supernatural for you and whatever, always come back and big up God. Let people know that the word of God works and that God is in the place. Remember, wherever he guides, he provides. And remember, if you come at a brook and you're drinking from a brook and God has met you at that brook with signs and wonders and miracles, drink, my brother. Don't lift that brook. Keep drinking from the brook because that's where God sent you and that's where he is providing for you. I don't know the, the, I don't remember the fullness of the testimony, but I would love if he will share that even on either Wednesday or Sunday or if you see him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, ma'am. Yes, good night, sir. Yes, good night, ma'am. As you are teaching, I'm learning and sometimes I feel like I get over certain things, and then I find myself talking about it. My aunt was a good auntie, used to send things, come Jamaica, God bless her for it. But from I get my visa, a pastor, she vexed with me. And I yeah. go far in our CR, I say, my auntie, at a graduation, I say, auntie, I go take a picture, which auntie? And I passed me up here and said to myself, but what I do, my auntie, my auntie used to send bar and no, me can't send it for myself. And she have me up. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't can't send barrel for yourself. How about your sister? How, how could you do such a thing? Eh? How could you get visa, go to foreign and send in barrel for yourself? That was a wicked act. How could you do that? Eh? Don't you know that you must live off a of high top? You didn't know that? He didn't know that you must write and beg mackerel, eh, and tuna, eh? A person may never know until after. Your the next thing, know. a person. Mm -hmm. Tell me the next thing. Hallelujah. I leave my key with my neighbor and she, when I come back from foreign, my things are missing out of my house. Where you go foreign far? Where you go foreign far? Eh? A person, the neighbor and me, I'll bring her come to church. My teacher, if it's tired. She a grow, she a get this. And pass at the end of the day, she behave as if she a have me visa. tea for the tea. She have, she have, she have visa? No, sir. Then what you, then, uh, we don't understand. I leave her the key for water my flowers then. But you know easy. Me never know so the flowers have key. Eh? You leave the key for water flowers. Side up on the veranda, sir. Eh? Put the flowers outside. The, the flowers are going to run, eh? No, sir. <laughs> me never know so the flowers have foot. Left your flowers outside. Eh? Yes, sir. Yes. Eh? Sir, the lady babe now, like, 
You know, they wouldn't be like a UT some from them, so I you have to see them and I call to them. Uh -huh. Sister, remember, you know, we are not immune from it, you know. There are several persons from them here that GWF have the property over there, sir. Yes, sir. Some, it has haunted many. Some have left church. Some cry because they were hoping that it would never be true. Some people were hurt by the fact that there was such a land. You have some people who would have wanted for us to be arms house of service. But because we're not in the arms house, I keep service. Hallelujah. Hurt people. And some of them are watched up online. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are watched, but they're not coming up. They are watched, but they're not coming. They would have loved to hear that there was no land. And the man of God is a potter cat. Mm -hmm. It would have Me. pleased them. But they are hurt and distraught. When they found out that there was a real yeah, land. True, sir. Me hear about them. You, you hear about them? All right. Of oh, uh, all right. Just for show you, they have allowed the enemy to use strategy and deceit to trick them and move them out of the place where God sent them. That are the thing, you know. And guess what now? Apostles still love them. I would have still extend my hand for them to come back and sit under the word. You know why? Because guess what now? Sometime when I look back at it, the devil they tricked me enough time to and so but me just have to know when we get tricked, just accept it and just repent and turn back and just make the thing right. But some people pride them make a keep them out. I wish part them the brook is and, and what they don't realize is this if God send you somewhere and you leave by any other means, there is nowhere else you will go and prosper nowhere in a matter of time they're going to realize it because god understand this if god if god do that every time then he wouldn't be god then that means the devil can't get back a chance if god send you at a place and he said he's going to provide for you and the enemy come and move you from that space the provision is not going to come hunting you down no and also god work yes, you're going to have to find your way But them not know that. So them still a look now and say, oh, God is with me. What they don't realize is that little by little, the presence that they had on them will wear away. God will teach some. But it's, it's a horrible way to learn. But God is going to teach many by their disobedience and rebellion. Because one of the things is this. You never, I know this, you never ever, based on the scripture, you can't curse someone who God has blessed. It's a scripture. If not, or the place where God has blessed you, you curse it. That means the blessing that you, all the blessing that you get there and that you have now will become a curse to you in a matter of time. That's how the system said. That's what the word said. He will bless those who bless you and the what? Curse those who curse you. You said, and, and the what? Curse those who curse you. Yeah, so when the curse, I read some of them, them think of people are pray against them. But is the scripture is alive. He will curse those who curse you. How can you curse or speak against who God bless? That's madness. I'm saying to you, be not afraid. All of us, some of you watching right now, I'm sure you have people out there who say, sister, the same thing happened to me and worse. Listen, you just have to smile. You get visa, bless God, you get it. And now your eyes open. What God wants you to learn from it is, their heart was never with you in the first place. There is nobody who genuinely love you and who see you getting promotion in life who that will hate you automatically. No. People with a good heart will always be happy for you when you progress. Yes, yes people who oh, say them have a good heart. We just read the scripture, you know. With a burning lips, they say, oh, them love you. But them never mean it. So how you deal with them, sir? How you deal with them? Continue travel, sister. Continue go back and forth and send your barrel. That's how you deal with them. Because I know, hello, hello. It is God who bless you and it's God who put you in a position that you are in. 
promotion comes not from man but from God. Make them. Remember, he says, you know, he'll prepare a table before you in the presence, presence of your enemy. It's just that you never know all along that they were your enemies. So the blessing on people's life is just showing the enemies that you thought were your friends. So the blessing, it takes the blessing to expose the enemies, you know. Okay. And that's what is happening. You won't know your enemy until the blessing comes. When the blessing comes, you are going to see the Hittites and the Amalekites and the Jebusites and even some who you thought were your friends. You are going to realize that them have a sword away for jam in your side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because some people believe that them alone must get blessed. And the minute you start get blessed, they are upset with you. And at, at something bad you do. Is man you have? Are you a thief it? Or it come on in churches. They might teach, teach the church offering. They might teach the, the, the tithes and whatever, right? Because God can't bless you unless you thief or unless you have man. You know, if you're a female and so, uh, and think, you know, God can't bless you and you get a promotion normally. A man you have at the workplace. You see, this is how people think. Yes, sir. Right? And so, welcome to the club. This is not the Honey Palmer Club, though. <laughs> this is the club of the people who God has blessed. The scripture says it comes with the Philistine. Yes, Envy from the Philistine. So all you have to do, sister, thank God that him reveal who they are. So now you know you can't eat and let your food and go back, go, go, go eat it. Now you know that you can't let your juice and turn your back. Because you have to understand now that the realities are people not happy for you. People who you thought would have been happy for you is now showing that they are upset with you. You ask yourself the question, did you thief a visa? No. no sir. God bless you. Did you thief the barrel? No. no. Sir. God bless you. Okay. So what am I vexed with you for? Them for vexed with God? I'm not vexed with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You for just send them a little note and say, if you plan to vex, vex, vex with, with God. God. Not me, it's God who give it to me. Yes, sir. Right? So it's the same way I would tell those. Why no back sin with me for? Me never give me no land. land. God give it a oh, land. God give me. Right? Is God give it to me? I didn't steal it. God gave it to me. Right? You can't ask why me get it. Ask him. Go to God and say, God, why you give him? God will know how to deal with you. But because they don't want to go to God, they want to take it out upon the people of God. You know, see that? Yes, the enemy use strategy and deceit to trick them. And God them for go vex with. True, sir. It's not the people who God bless. God will always bless his people. God will always love his people. God will always reward his people. And the people who not getting the rewards are the ones who are upset. Now you see why God don't bless them. Them heart never right in the first place. So sister, how you deal with that? Just keep praying, loving them, sow your seed, come on your church, sing your song, and praise God. Just thank Lord for two more barrels. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's just that sometimes I find myself just uh, mention it again. I think me, me get it out, but I say she and I pin them tea no. for me, sit them out of my house. No, and sometimes see, I right. really want to yeah, yeah. tap about it. Yeah. So why you can't because stop? guess what? She thieves the things you know, and trust me, God provide bigger and better. All right. Why you think God provide bigger and better? Can I want you to stop talking about that? Yes, sir. Remember, rem remember this. Let me help you with this. She not tea from you, you know. She's tea she tea from God. Okay. Don't you tie yeah, all the time. Yeah, you know who she tea from? She tea from God. Okay. Yeah. So God, I go bless you, give you back that. So God said, no, you don't have to talk about that. Me bless you back with it. So Leave it alone. Yeah, man, leave that. You understand okay. me? So yes, always sir. remember that. Anybody rob from you now as a tither, them rob from God. Yes, sir. Anybody talk about you who have served God, them have talk about God. Yes, sir. Anybody who come against you who have served God, them have come against God. But them don't know that. Mm. But that is the reality of it. 
So just go on, enjoy your Jesus. You know, see, oh, God, I bless you and your children. Yes, sir. We have a next testimony. I'm oh. ready to give you. The same sure. word that you gave me about four years ago. Glory it's, to God. It has come to pass. Look at that, man. Sure, yes, you see that. You Never see that. let go of that word, Apostle. Glory but to God. Have the testimony Glory at to the God. right time. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. That's right, sister. You roll it out. So you see, you've been drinking from the brook. It's, 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 it's just, it's so the thing said, there are manifestations there, manifestation. And for those, as I said before, wherever, who figure that, okay, no, 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 nothing good not there, then make, make every blessing that you have received become a curse to you. Because if, if the place is not a good place, then nothing where you get supposed to be good. That's just how it works. If, if the place is no good, then why get from the place and keep it? Why not take it back? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give God praise tonight. That's been some strong word tonight, but I trust that you get some nuggets that you can get out of your situation, whatever that those um, situations might be. Hallelujah. What a word tonight. Come on again, give God praise. You're watching us online. I trust that the word has been impacting your lives, your heart, your families, and I trust that you will continue to walk on the word as we follow Christ. Come on, give God praise tonight.